Why are people quitting League of Legends? Five reasons why I quit Fortnite. Mm. Why I quit Overwatch. Why I'm quitting PUBG after 1000 hours. <laughs> this is why so many people leave Dota 2. Why I quit CSGO competitive forever. This is why they're quitting every game. There are a lot of videos like this out there. Not sure if you've realized. In this video, I want to go through the top 10 reasons why YouTubers quit playing certain games League of Legends uh, Fortnite whatever and I'm gonna debunk some of them because I think some of the reasons they mention are completely ridiculous and I'm also gonna tell you which of the reasons I think are pretty legit let's get started number 10 bugs and bad performance prime example PUBG of course so if your game just runs poorly and has a lot of bugs is that a legit reason to quit yes of course it is as a game developer it's your responsibility to make sure your game runs properly and if you don't care enough to fix it, then say goodbye to your players. Reason number nine, cheating and the abuse of game systems. Obviously a legit reason. If you can't be bothered to play against hackers and cheaters, of course you're gonna quit. So once again, it's just the responsibility of the game developers to keep the game safe and clean. Reason number eight, the game is dead. I think calling a game dead is a little exaggerated most of the time, especially if you use it in combination with uh, a really popular game like StarCraft, League of Legends, PUBG, whatever. Those games, they don't die that easily, okay? A game is dead if you queue up for a game and you can't find a match. When you can't find anybody to play with, basically, that's when a game is dead. And yes, that can happen, and yes, that is a very legit reason to stop playing a game, but I just think the term, the game is dead, is uh, pretty overused, and most of the time it's just not true. We also need to keep in mind that we're looking at the opinion and the videos of YouTubers here, though, so what they're basically saying is the game is dropping in popularity, and obviously that can be a very legit reason for a YouTuber to stop playing a game. If a game becomes less popular, that means less views, etc, etc. So yes, in this case I kind of understand. At that point calling a game dead is not really fair though. Reason number seven is not enough updates. So not enough patches, not enough new content. Maybe the bugs are not fixed quickly enough. Necessary changes to the game balance are taking too long. Players have to wait for a very long time for new maps or for new player characters. So yeah, just not enough updates to the game. Does that sound like a legit reason to quit? Yes, at first it does, but it's a little more complicated. Because reason number six, a lot of YouTubers seem to quit playing games, is because there are too many updates, too many changes to the game. And yes, of course, they don't mention both of these reasons in one video, that wouldn't make any sense. It's just for some games there seem to be too many updates and for some games there seem to be too little updates. But why are too many content and balancing patches a problem, you might wonder? And one of the main reasons is just that it can get very exhausting to keep up with all of the changes, even for professional players. League of Legends, probably the prime example for that because Riot just keeps reworking a lot of the old systems all the time and even professionals seem to have a hard time keeping up. If you don't play the game for half a year and you try to come back to it, pretty much everything has changed. Congratulations, everything you've learned about the game so far is now useless. Have fun. On top of that, there are always some people who just like the old system better than the new system. So whenever you make a change, you will just piss some people off by default. I hope you can see the dilemma game developers are in here. They make too many changes, people get pissed, overwhelmed, confused. They make too little changes, people get bored and the game gets stale. Anyway, people will quit, there's no way to win. Bam. Wait! You think there's a middle ground somewhere in between? Honestly, I'm not that sure because usually games don't pull it off to stay relevant for a long time. In my opinion, you probably have the highest chance if your game is just very good and interesting in the first place. So it doesn't need a lot of updates and content patches to be interesting. If you manage to make a game that is just fun and really stays fun just by itself without needing any updates, that's when you have the highest chance to stay relevant for a very long amount of time, in my opinion. Because finding the middle ground between too many and too little updates... Ah! Ah! I don't think that's possible. And to be fair, yes, there is probably something like a sweet spot somewhere in between. It's just not a sweet spot that is perfect and that will keep your game going forever. It's basically just a spot where you will inflict the least amount of suffering onto your players. But that's still 
far from perfect. Of course it also depends on which updates and which content you introduce into the game. Some changes definitely help to make the game more interesting without pissing anybody off, for example just adding a new game mode. Who could be angry about that one and it still provides something new to the game? It's just these options are limited, you can't keep adding new game modes forever. At some point the maintenance cost for that is just gonna get too high. You're gonna split the community too much. And worst of all, at some point it just gets overwhelming as well for the players, especially for new players. If there's just too much stuff in the game, it can be really intimidating and overwhelming for new players. And without any new players, the game's obviously doomed to die earlier or later. So long story short, not enough updates and too many updates are both legit reasons to quit playing a game. From a developer game designer perspective it's just a little more complicated than that. It's very hard to find the correct balance in my opinion. How do you handle this situation as a developer? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I don't have enough experience. The only thing I'm saying is from now on watch your mouth if you're saying things like <laughs> they are not updating the game enough because things are not that easy. Sometimes they are. Sometimes developers are just too lazy to fix a bug or taking too long to release a new map. But you get the point. Reason number five, a toxic community you don't want to play with. Is that a legit reason? Yes, of course. Nobody wants to play with people who constantly scream at you and throw the game on purpose and write mean things into the chat. That's just no fun. Um, of course, if you want to play online games, you have to uh, kind of develop a thick skin because you'll always meet people like that. But too much of it is just no fun and it's totally a reason to quit, I understand. Once again, this is a thing where I think developers can only do so much. They can give you a way to report players who behave poorly, they can give you a way to reward players who behave well. But really, what other ways are there to make sure toxicity doesn't become too much of a thing? Good matchmaking might help because if the matches are really close, people tend to be a little less toxic in my opinion. Games where you get completely steamrolled and you feel like there's nothing you can do about it are the ones where you get the most toxic players. Overwatch is definitely one of those games where basically every second match is a complete steamroll. And if the game doesn't allow you to surrender that can make matters even worse because you feel like you're stuck and the game's already lost. But you have to keep playing for another 15 minutes just to finally lose <coughs> League of Legends, <coughs> Heroes of the Storm. <coughs> that obviously creates a lot of toxicity. So yeah, there are things developers can do about it. Make sure the matches are close, make sure people can surrender, reward players who behave well, punish players who behave poorly. But that's about it. And I can tell you, it's not enough to get 100% toxicity free. Not gonna happen. Reason number four is one you hear very often and one that I think makes a lot of sense bad communication from the developers. So first of all, it feels like they're not listening, they're not reacting to what the community wants. And then secondly, the developers are not communicating properly what their plans for the games are, what they want to do with the game and where they are taking the game. So of course, that can feel frustrating for players. Of course, that can make players quit. From a developer perspective, I think it's a tough one to pull off correctly, but at the very least, it's possible. Good communication is not an impossibility, you can actually pull it off if you really want it. The hardest part is probably not the talking because yeah, as a developer you should just share your plans for the game, you should share where you're taking the game and you should always explain the reasons why you are changing something, that is very important. Don't set any wrong expectations, all that sort of stuff. But the listening is definitely the difficult part because there are so many different voices in your community, everybody wants something else and the people who make the most noise are probably also not an accurate representation of your player base. The players who are happy don't make any noise, the players who are unhappy make all of the noise. Which means even if the majority of your player base is happy, you will still pretty much hear only unhappy people who tell you to change things up. So it's a very natural response as a game developer to just shut a lot of this down and ignore a lot of this and just make your own calls, which is obviously pretty dangerous as well. Because when the majority of your player base is actually unhappy, you might not realize it. Bad communication, everybody. Something that can definitely ruin your game, but it's also something you can do correctly if you really want to. For example, I think more games should use surveys on polls to find out what players want. Surveys are such a nice way to get an accurate representation of what your players want. Just ask them a couple of questions and with that data you can do a lot more than with a couple of forum posts of people 
uh, telling you how unhappy they are with the state of the game. Surveys also make you feel like the developers care about your opinion, which is also a nice feeling to have as a player. Why? Why aren't you doing more of them? I don't understand. Reason number three why YouTubers quit their beloved games. Also a very, very common reason. Bad balancing. And this is one where I have to say I'm leaning more towards nah, not legit. If you are complaining about balancing in a game like League of Legends, you have to understand that it is simply not possible to balance 80 characters with hundreds of different variables because even very small changes can have absolutely massive ripple effects. Let's just say you give hero X one additional HP. And even though that's an absolutely minor change, it could mean hero B now takes two instead of one hits in order to kill it. So basically takes twice as long to kill that character just because we gave it one additional HP. And there are just so many things you can't account for. You don't know how players will behave once your balancing changes go live. And there's no way to test it before that either. If you set up a test server with a couple of play testers, that's always gonna give you very different results from actually pushing it to the live servers. So that's just point number one. It's not possible to balance complex games like that. And then point number two is you don't even want them to be perfectly balanced in the first place. You want them to be imbalanced. There's a video called Perfect Imbalance by Extra Credits. If I remember, I'll link that somewhere here. They do a really good job explaining this concept. They basically state that as long as everything has still a counter, imbalance makes for a more interesting metagame, for a more evolving metagame. Because everybody's trying to come up with a creative and effective counter. The problem only occurs if there is no counter to a dominant strategy. At that point that strategy is just broken and should be fixed. And yes, sometimes developers don't fix these strategies. Which sucks and which is a reason to quit a game. For sure. So yes, balancing can be a legit reason to quit playing a game, but most of the time it's just not as bad as people make it look in their why I've quit videos. It's just if you have played a game for 1000 hours plus, you're way more likely to notice these imbalances. Maybe you don't like the meta it creates. Yeah, that's a reason to quit as well, I guess. But the good news, if you don't like the current meta of a game, is that the meta will keep changing and it might become better sometime in the future. That's just the way it goes and it doesn't necessarily have to be the fault of the balancing. Reason number two is probably the most legit, the most honest one on this entire list. It's that you just got bored. Let's be real, if you play a game for 1000 hours plus, you're just gonna get bored of it. There's almost no way around that. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are games you can play for way, way longer, but 1000 hours is definitely the point where I'm no longer surprised if you're like, okay, I've had enough of this. And also think the YouTubers that mention this reason are definitely the more honest ones. Sure, you can come up with all kinds of other reasons, but in the end, it's just, what do you expect? Did you expect you could play this game forever? No! The video game that stays interesting forever still needs to be invented. And now finally, reason number one is the one where I call bullshit at the very least most of the time. It's just not the game I fell in love with anymore. <laughs> and this is just the point where I'm really like, what do you want? If the developers update the game, they change the identity of the game. It's just not the game you fell in love with anymore. <laughs> if they don't update the game, it gets boring, it gets mundane. <laughs> they don't even update the game. The game is dead. I mean, can you update a game without changing its core identity? Yes, you probably can, true. But you're gonna change something. It's never gonna be exactly the same. And also let me say, if you play a game for a thousand hours, it will still not be the game you fell in love with 1000 hours ago. If you play a game for that long, you're gonna get sick of it. Your love's gonna get stale, just like love in real life. If you know a game that well, you're gonna notice all of the little flaws and all of the imperfections and they're gonna start pissing you off more and more the longer you play. And also games are just different in the late game. If you get really good at a game, the game changes. Let's take StarCraft for example. If you get started playing StarCraft, there are so many different creative strategies you can play. But the better you get, the fewer strategies there are that actually work. You get more and more constrained and the game just isn't the same anymore at a higher level. It might still be a good game, but it's definitely almost a different game and it's definitely no longer the game you fell in love with anymore. The only thing that might be left is a little bit of nostalgia. 
But that's it. By the way, do these YF quit videos show up in your feed at all? They definitely do for me, maybe, because I always click on them. I think it's absolutely fascinating and interesting to see why people quit games. It's one of the most interesting metrics for a game designer like me, because we don't, obviously, we don't want people to quit playing our games. Most of what I've talked about only applies to online games, but I think there are also a lot of takeaways for just casual indie games. I'm very curious to hear your take on all of these points, so leave a comment this is a youtube channel about game development and i'm gonna see you in the next one